एटीन हंड्रेड आवर्स पाकिस्तान स्टैंडर्ड टाइम असलम दिस इज रेडियो पाकिस्तान द न्यूज रेड बाय फरजाना खान फर्स्ट द हेडलाइंस प्राइम मिनिस्टर सेज कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ मोर कोल इफेक्टिव हाउसेज अंडर द वर्कर्स वेलफेयर फंड इज अ प्रैक्टिकल एग्जाम्पल ऑफ गवर्नमेंट कमिटमेंट Foreign Office spokesperson has reiterated that Pakistan will not recognize Israel unless just settlement of the Palestinian issue. Foreign Minister is in Niger to represent Pakistan at the OIC Council of Foreign Ministers two-day conference beginning tomorrow. At the United Nations, Pakistan has urged to end the use of unilateral sanctions as these me- measures destabilize the lives and livelihood of millions of people. All parties Hurriyat conference Hurriyat leaders and organizations have strongly denounced the Indian occupation authorities for demolishing residential houses belonging to Muslims in the illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir. China says India's recent claim to ban 43 more Chinese apps on national security grounds is a glaring violation of market principles and World Trade Organization rules. And now the news in detail. Special Assistant on Overseas Pakistanis Sayyid Zulfiqar Abbas Bukhari called on Prime Minister Imran Khan in Islamabad today. During the meeting, construction of 1,500 houses and a workers' welfare fund came under discussion. The project will provide affordable and low-cost residential facility with all basic amenities and will be inaugurated in January next year. Appreciating the project, the Prime Minister said, this is a practical example of government's commitment for provision of affordable houses to the people. People. Minister for Information and Broadcasting Senator Shibli Faraz has said the world is acknowledging the remarkable resilience shown by Pakistan's economy in the wake of coronavirus. In a tweet he said Pakistan is being showcased as a model for the world and has received recognition from President World Economic Forum Boje Brende. He said the address of Prime Minister Imran Khan at the World Economic Forum was a manifestation of our successful strategic priorities. British High Commissioner to Pakistan Christian Turner called on the advisor to the Prime Minister on Finance Dr Abdul Hafiz Sheikh in Islamabad today. The advisor briefed the British High Commissioner about the measures taken by the government to lessen the adverse impact of COVID-19 on economy and to protect vulnerable segments of the society. The High Commissioner assured that British government will provide all possible support to Pakistan in mitigating the socio-economic impact of the pandemic. Speaker of National Assembly Asad Qaisar has said that Saudi Arabia always open-heartedly extended support for the development of Pakistan. He was talking to Saudi Ambassador to Pakistan Nawaf bin Said Al Maliki in Islamabad today. The speaker said there are vast opportunities of cooperation between the two countries in different sectors. In his remarks, the Saudi Ambassador said expatriate Pakistanis in Saudi Arabia are playing an important role in the development of the kingdom. He assured Saudi Arabia's continued cooperation for social sector of Pakistan Foreign Office spokesperson Zaid Afif Chaudhry has said that recognition of Israel is not under consideration addressing weekly news briefing in Islamabad today he reiterated that there is no change in Pakistan's principled position on the issue he said the prime minister has made it clear that unless a just settlement of the Palestine issue satisfactory to the Palestinian people is reached Pakistan cannot re- recognize Israel referring to the dossier Pakistan has recently presented on India's sponsorship of terrorism the spokesperson called upon the UN counter terrorism bodies to proceed on the basis of evidence provided by Pakistan and urge India to renounce the use of terrorism as an instrument of state policy he said the world bodies should also urge India to dismantle the infrastructure of terrorism as it has established to carry out terrorism in Pakistan Responding to a question the spokesperson said Pakistan looks forward to working with the new US administration to further strengthen bilateral ties and to continue partnership to achieve peace stability and prosperity in the region 
Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi is in Niger to represent Pakistan at the OIC Council of Foreign Ministers two-day meeting beginning tomorrow. The Foreign Minister and President Azad Kashmir, Sardar Masood Khan, will address the meeting and apprise the participants about the grave human rights situation in Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir. During the two-day session, the delegates will discuss a wide range of issues confronting the Muslim world with particular focus on combating Islamophobia. Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi has said Pakistan is determined for bilateral cooperation with Niger in various fields including education, trade and investment sectors. He was talking to a delegation of heads of Niger's universities in Niger today. The Foreign Minister said that measures will be taken to provide education opportunities to the students of Niger in Pakistan. This is Radio Pakistan giving you the news. Pakistan has lodged a strong protest with India over its recent ceasefire violations on the line of control which resulted in the martyrdom of an innocent civilian. The Indian charge of affairs was summoned to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs today to register the protest. Condemning the deplorable targeting of innocent civilians by the Indian occupation forces, it was underscored that such senseless acts are in clear violation of the 2003 ceasefire understanding and are also against all established humanitarian norms and professional military conduct. In Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir, the old party's Hurriyat conference and other Hurriyat leaders and organizations have strongly denounced the occupation authorities for demolishing residential houses and other structures belonging to Muslims in the territory. The authorities have so far demolished scores of houses and other structures of Gujar and Bakarwal communities at Pehlgam in Islamabad and Muslim-majority areas in Jammu. The APHC spokesman in a statement in Sirinagar said that the authorities have taken control of the seized land to settle Hindu outsiders to change the Muslim-majority status of Jammu and Kashmir. The chairman of Gujar Pahari Democratic Forum, Chaudhry Shahin Iqbal, in a statement denounced the Modi government's brutal action against Gujar and Bakarwal Muslims. He said New Delhi has no right to forcibly expel them from their land as Gujars and Bakarwals are residing in the areas since centuries. At the United Nations, Pakistan has urged the world's powerful states to end the use of unilateral sanctions as these measures not only intensify food and health insecurities but also destabilize the lives and livelihood of millions of people in the targeted countries. Speaking at an inaugural meeting of the Security Council, Pakistan's permanent representative to the world body, Munir Akram, said that unilateral coercive measures are contrary to the purposes and the UN Charter. Munir Akram said the UN General Assembly and the Security Council have recognized that people should not be deprived of their means of subsistence, especially food and medicines, even where Council's enforcement action may be required. China has expressed serious concern over India's recent claim to ban 43 more Chinese apps on national security grounds. In a statement, Foreign Ministry spokesman Zhao Lijian said these moves are a glaring violation of market principles and World Trade Organization rules. Ethiopian Prime Minister Ebe Ahmed says he is launching the final phase of the army's operation in Tigray with an attack on the regional capital, Makele. He said the military would not try to harm civilians and urged the people to stay at home. And finally, we have the weather report for you. Mainly cold and dry weather is likely to prevail in most parts of the country during the next 24 hours. However, fog is likely in plain areas of Punjab and Upper Sindh during morning hours, while very cold and hilly areas of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, North Baluchistan, Gilgit Baltistan and Kashmir. To end the news, the main points once again. Prime Minister says construction of cost-effective houses and a workers' welfare fund is a practical example of government's commitment. <music> Foreign Office spokesperson has reiterated that Pakistan will not recognize Israel unless just settlement of the Palestinian issue. <music> Foreign Minister is in Niger to represent Pakistan at the OIC Council of Foreign Ministers two-day conference beginning tomorrow. At the United Nations, Pakistan is urged to end the use of unilateral sanctions as these measures destabilize the lives and livelihood of millions of people. 
All parties Hurriyat Conference, Hurriyat leaders and organizations have strongly denounced the Indian occupation authorities for demolishing residential houses belonging to Muslims in illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir. And that is the end of the news. For more news and analyses, log on to our website radio.gov.pk and also watch live video streaming of our bulletins on the link facebook.com slash radio pakistan news official.